Hey guys, Steph here. Hey, in this video, I'm going to talk about how I got my very first paid web design job. I think people who are getting into the game, the web design, web development game, are going to find this video super interesting because as I tell the story, you're going to learn about the things that I countered. You're going to learn a few little tips along the way as well. So uh, yeah, well, before I get into it, I'm going to head off, go over the mountain, get my coffee because I need a little brain stimulation. For you, it's going to be a split second. For me, it's going to be, I don't know, maybe an hour or so. I like to chillax in my car too. All right, we'll see you soon. Hey guys, I'm back from my coffee. It's actually been a day. I just got caught up with other work. So before I get into the story about my very first paid web design job way back in the 90s, I'm just going to give you the bullet points of some of the lessons that you can get from this experience and several other experiences I had in terms of dealing with my first clients. So first of all, when you're starting off, your web design jobs will not be steady. I'm talking about freelance here. It's going to be spotty at first. This is normal, so you just have to structure your life accordingly. I'll get into that in other videos. Uh, at first, you're going to get cheap clients. This is normal. You're getting into the game. You're going to get cheap clients at first. That's okay because you're just starting out. You have to learn the ropes in terms of how to manage projects, how to manage clients. It's okay. It only makes sense. Don't worry. As you progress, you'll start making more and more money. As I just mentioned, managing clients is a very important part of becoming a successful freelance developer. And it's actually a very good business skill to begin with altogether. And a big part of managing clients in the freelance game is managing client expectations so that they know and you know exactly what you're going to deliver so everybody knows what they expect out of the contract. And that means you should have a nice simple contract. I call it a line item contract where you have intro paragraph, the bullet points of what it is you're going to be building, what's expected. I'm not going to get into all the details here. But again, what you want to take away is that you want to establish a proper expectation with your clients so they know what they're getting, you know what they think they're getting, and you use a contract to define that more clearly. When you're starting off new, don't chase after big clients. It's never going to work out unless you're connected, you've got some nepotism going there. Generally speaking, when you're starting off as a freelancer, you're going to get small contracts, and that's cool because you should practice on small contracts. And don't waste your time on big contracts. You may have a few big fish who come around snooping, but they're just going to waste your time in the end because big contracts, big companies don't want to take risk with small unknown players, unknown developers. So keep that in mind. And uh, here's a final tip. Uh, when you're contracting, you always want to get some payment up front, whether it be 50% when you start, 50% on completion, or my favorite, 33% when you start, 33% on a first draft, when you deliver the first draft, and 33% when you complete. Anyway, so let's get into the story. So we're going way back into the 1990s and my personal situation at the time is I was in the middle of a legal battle with my uh, soon-to-be past business partner in a business totally unrelated to technology. This was an import-export business, and I don't want to go into the, the weeds of the situation, but essentially I had made a mistake where, I was a young guy, but I made a mistake where most of my money was in the business. So when I got into a battle with the business business partner my money was locked up so i had to find a alternative source of income while everything settled through the uh, legal process so fortunately for me i had learned how to code to build a website for my business now you gotta understand this is in the early 90s when this is all super new as it is today, back then, the first thing you got to do as a freelancer is put up a website. So I put up a website to show that I can do the work, and I just put up my contact information, and then I just hit the road. I hit the bricks, meaning I started talking to people, reaching out to people, see who might need websites, and so on. 
And like any business, there's always this lag time. There's always this time where it may be a few weeks, maybe a few months before you start finally getting things going. So you just have to persist. While you're persisting, you make sure your site looks pretty good or really good. And you just keep reaching out to people, maybe working on some new things, learning a little bit here and there. One of the things you have to understand as a developer, it's a continuous learning process. Especially in the first few years, you're always going to be learning new things as you get into new projects. This is just normal. As you get more experience, you have to learn less and less and less because you, you have learned more. But that's why you have to emphasize the core, the fundamentals. That's why you have to know these fundamentals going forward. It's so important because if you know your core and your fundamentals, you're properly trained that way, then when you're out there in the real world as a developer, whether you're working for somebody or you're a freelancer, you're going to always have to learn something new. So you have the core, you master that core, then you, new, learning new things is super easy. That's the key. Learning new things is super easy. One of the problems out there, what I see with so many of the uh, courses, they're really just tutorials. And tutorials are fine, but tutorials should be what you use after you've learned your core basics, your fundamentals. It's so key. So the vast majority of what you see out there, 99% is just tutorials. Now the problem with tutorials is we say, learn to build these 10 things, learn to build this, learn to build that, learn to build this. Without the foundation training, you're going to be very limited. And this is what students tell me once they've tried those and they come, they do the studio web stuff and everything changes. So think of it this way. If you wanted to learn to be a musician, what do you think is better? To learn how to play 10 songs where you learn some basic stuff, but you're really just memorizing 10 songs? Or is it better to learn how to play music, learning chords and notes and uh, if you, you know, A, B, C, D, E, the notes and the, the scales and timing and reading music? What would be better? Would it be better to learn 10 songs? Were you limited to those 10 songs, essentially? Or is it better to learn the foundations of music and then all of a sudden you can play every song ever written? Same thing with coding, same thing with development. You have that choice to make. So I say do the foundation, you got that super solid foundation, then you learn as you go and that will be the career as a developer. But don't worry, once you have your foundation, to learn something new, to learn a new framework, to learn a whole new programming language is not that hard actually. Anyway, so I put up a site to attract clients, I have to have something to show, right? And uh, this is a long time ago. This is before the search, engine, search engines were actually useful. In, in those days, in the early 90s, you, you go to a search engine and you type in anything, you were going to get porn. So search engines were use, useless in terms of clients. So I, would, I did what you did in those days. I went to the classified ads. And after a certain amount of time, I forget now, it's been a long time. It could have been a, a week, it could have been a, a month, I forget now. I found an ad where a guy was looking for, a small company was looking for a web designer. So I said, okay, sure, I'll answer the ad. Sent an email with my website so they can see what it is I can do. Just they can judge by the quality of the site. And I got a call and I set up a meeting. So I met him at a coffee shop. Now here's the first rule. Freelance developers don't need offices. Don't, even back then when it was kind of a new thing, and people were kind of not sure, I could still get away with not having an office. You don't want to get an office because it's a huge headache, it's a big expense. You don't want to do that. It's a business tip. You get an office only if you absolutely have to. So I go meet him at a coffee shop, and you sit down, see the guy, and when you first meet a new client, there's always this feel out period. They want to judge, and you want to judge, whether or not these people are rats or not, whether or not you can trust them. And that's why I emphasize after coding skills, you have to have great communication skills because oftentimes that's going to mean the difference between you being successful, whether you want to get a job, you want to be a freelancer, or you want to start your own business. You have to have good communication skills. So I sat down, talked to the guy, a little bit of banter, a little chit chat, and uh, we got along. So then we started getting into the specifics of the project. After he gave me the specifics of the project, he then asked me the two inevitable questions. Number one, how much do you charge per hour? And number two, what do you think this project is going to cost overall? You see, they're going to ask you how much you charge per hour, even though just about 99% of your clients, especially your first job, they're going to be saying, I want a fixed cost on this. I don't want you to say it's going to be X dollars per hour, and then you can just tell me how many hours you've done. Very few 
people will do that. Only after they know you and trust you uh, will they let you go by the hour. What they're going to do, they're going to ask you how much by the hour just to judge your price, and they're going to say, okay, how much for the, for the actual total cost of the project? So they asked me my price, the, the client did, and I gave them a price a little higher than I wanted because usually they're going to try to bargain you down. That's just the way it is. So there's a little humming and hawing there, and then he said, okay, well, how much is this is going to be to do this project? Now, at that time, my abilities to evaluate the value of a job wasn't as mature because I, I was just starting out as a freelancer. I'd only done my site and some other one other site, so I wasn't really super experienced. So I said to him, I'll get back to you. I want to look at the details, make sure everything's cool, and I'll get back to you at a price. So I went back and I did my best estimate. Here's another tip. When you're building your demo site, when you're building your own site to demo to people as a freelancer or even to, to get a job, take meticulous notes about how long it takes you to do things. Why? Because this is going to help you become a better judge of how long it takes to build a site so you can better quote people, if that makes sense. So I gave the guy a call a couple days later. I said, okay, I got a price for you. And then we bantered the price and there was negotiation. And as usual, because I was new and because he knew I was new because I didn't have any credits on my site, it was just my site, I didn't have a list of clients, my price was pushed down. But I took the job because A, I needed the money and B, I needed to get a client. I needed to get my first client. The first client is the hardest client to get in any business regardless. So you got to be a little bit more flexible with the first client. And your first client might be a free client. My very first client... It was not really paid. I, I did a legal firm where they, they, they did all my incorporations for uh, my business. They handled all the incorporation. I was worth a couple of grand at the time. And then they were going to expand in all kinds of other areas. We'll get into that for now. But So it wasn't really the same. It was like he'll say, he, they said, you build the site. We'll, give you, we'll create your corporation for you. I said, okay, cool, done. It was a sideline for me at the time anyway, so I didn't care. But this new client, what I'm talking about now, it was actually dollars. So I agreed to the price, we meet again, I get a check for the first, I don't know if it was 33% or half, I forget now, it's so long ago. And away we go, and then we build the site. You know, I had a basic contract, I knew about contracts, which was my previous business. We stipulated what I had to do, by what dates, what it, is, what it was they expected in the payment schedule. When you create a contract with a uh, client, you get a copy, they got a copy, both copies are signed by both parties, meaning you get a signed copy with his signature and your signature, and he gets a signed copy from you with his signature and your signature. The whole point of the contract is to clarify what the relationship's about, who, what are you doing for what, and it avoids, it helps in a way to avoid conflict down the road because it's clear it's on paper. So always get a written contract and always make sure you have a signed copy. So I delivered that contract, I delivered the site, he was happy, and what happened is what typically happens. They become a long-standing client, and so I forget the details, been so long with this guy, but a few months later, he came back, and he did this, and he did this done, and he did this and that done, so you get, you're starting to get a stream of income from this client as a freelancer, and what you're going to learn is that entrepreneurs hang out and know other business owners. They know entrepreneurs. So if you do a good job and you have a great relationship with them, communication skills are huge to establish that, then he'll start talking to his friends, his entrepreneur friends. And then you find you start slowly, slowly getting more contracts. Now, what you do is when you finish the site, you take a screenshot of the site, you feature it on the homepage of your site, and so you have your first paid client. And when you got three or four of those paid clients where you can demo them on your homepage, you start directing people to your homepage, all of a sudden, it's like uh, book reviews on Amazon. All of a sudden, you become much more credible, and the opportunities in terms of the number of new clients you're going to get are just going to start increasing quite a bit. So how do you maximize that into making big money? Well, as you slowly develop your skills as a web developer, where you uh, become a better coder for, to begin with, and you start working out Workflows. Workflows are such an important part of any type of business. And a part of the value of a business is that they've worked out the workflow. The workflow is just the way in which you get the job done. So 
when you uh, develop your skills as a developer, at first your workflow is going to be no good. You're not going to have any. And also you're a junior programmer, so you're going to be learning the ropes. You're going to be learning all of the hassles and the problems that developers have to deal with as they uh, work with clients and so forth. And over time, you're going to continuously develop more and more workflows so that you can minimize the amount of time it takes you to complete a job. And thus, your value per hour, your time, your time is going to become more and more valuable. That's why junior developers make less than experienced developers. But then, once you become that experienced developer, here comes the money. And there are strategies you can implement, of course, where you can really maximize the amount of money you can make as a developer. But I won't get into that here. Uh, I talk about that in other videos. So there you go. That was how I got my very first web development job. I put up a cheap site. Well, it wasn't cheap. I put up a simple site. I went out there, started knocking on doors, talking to people. And I eventually, of all places, I got it through a classified ad. I had to, uh, I had to cut my price for the first client because, you know, we're new. And I was new. But eventually, uh, that turned into a lucrative contract because as they become as they turn to trust me more, to become more dependent on me, and as they get more and more clients, you start making more and more money. So it is a process. And last point I have mentioned previous, well, just a few minutes ago, when you are a developer, it is a continuous process of learning. As you become more experienced, the amount you have to learn will decrease, of course, but you're always learning something new. So that's why I emphasize you have to learn the core, you have to learn your fundamentals really well so that it becomes easy to learn new things. Again, going back to that, whether you want to learn 10 songs or you want to learn how to play music. Better learn how to play music so you can play every song in the world. That's the key. You learn the core, you learn the fundamentals of any discipline. Music, martial arts, coding, programming. You learn the fundamentals, all of a sudden you open up the whole world, the whole world of that particular discipline, whether it be a discipline, whether it be martial arts, coding, or whatnot. And that's what happened with me. In the latter stages uh, of my freelance career, I would just walk into a project, walk in to see a client, do, 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 and I would say, okay, what do you need to do? And then based on the needs of the job, I would choose a technology, I would choose a language that was required, and more often than not, I would have to learn at least something new. And sometimes I would learn an entirely new language. It didn't matter to me because I was pretty comfortable with my fundamentals, and so I was able to get up and running with a new tech super quickly. Unfortunately for me, it took me a couple of years to figure out that strategy. I should have known it right away because that's, that's how it is in martial arts. And, um, but for, fortunately for you, you're watching this video, now you know, so you can save yourself years, years, and, uh, and uh, speed up your development process of becoming a highly paid or a highly earning freelance developer. All right, that's it for this video. My instant message is pinged. And when the phone pings, you got to go. Bye-bye.